In our life, you know, Jesus said about the seed of the word of God. <clears throat> the seed, the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. He explained this parable in Matthew 13 and verse 18. You know this, the parable of the seed. <clears throat> The seed which is sown on the ground, <clears throat> which springs up immediately. It says here in Matthew 13 and verse 20, the seed which is sown on the rocky places is a picture of a man who hears the word. Think of us sitting here hearing the word and immediately receives it with joy. Oh, that's a great verse. But it doesn't go deep. You hear something and it's come into your mind, but it has not gone further than the mind. And <clears throat> it, because it doesn't have firm root, what happens later on, he falls away into sin. <clears throat> we can hear some wonderful things here in the church, some of the most amazing truths that you probably will never hear anywhere else in any other church. But if it does not sink deep, it will only remain in our mind. And that's the reason why very often the life that's described in the New Testament does not become ours. Rivers of living water flowing out from us is God's will for every single one of us. That the Holy Spirit's power flows from within, blessing others. You know, like the Lord told Abraham, you'll be a blessing to all the families of the earth. Galatians 3.14 says that's for us, which means I take it like this, that any family or person I come across fairly intimately must be blessed in some way, spiritually, just through contact with me. That's the promise of Abraham. Do you believe that in your place of work? I'm not saying they'll all get converted. Even Jesus did not convert all of Israel. But those who are called of God will be blessed. So this is something that we have to think of seriously. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And in this connection, I want to read another verse in Hebrews chapter 4. You know, in the Old Testament, there was no distinction between soul and spirit. The Bible says that man is a trinity like God's body, soul and spirit. And most Christians do not know the difference between soul and spirit. There are many believers I know who say that man is only two parts, body and soul. If someone were to ask you, can you explain to me the difference between soul and spirit? Now, why is it important? Would you have an answer? Now, Hebrews 4, <clears throat> in verse 12, it says, The word of God is living and active, and sharper than any two-edged sword and it pierces the division of soul and spirit that's deep in dividing between soul and spirit what is that division between soul and spirit that the word of God if someone were to ask you to explain Hebrews 4.12 to him well, if you've been a believer for four or five years, you should be able to explain that. I remember <clears throat> when I was in the Navy, and I was a young officer, and the captain on the deck of the ship, on the bridge of the ship, would ask me something. And if I said, I don't know, sir, he would say, never say, I don't know. Say, I will find out, sir. I don't know is the answer of a lazy man. I will find out, sir, is the answer of a person who wants to know. And that helped me. I, mean, I heard that 60 years ago and I haven't forgotten it. 